Have you ever tried a wine from Moldova for, before? Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Hi, I'm Shireen Tan. Welcome back to the show. Have you ever tried a wine from Moldova for, before? Have you? Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, this is all this episode is going to be about, about the wines of Moldova. We just spent a week there traveling through. We went to about three cellars a day, tastings at night. We tasted, I think, I counted over 150 wines during that week. Mm -hmm. It was an intense but really good comprehensive introduction to Moldovan wine. The Republic of Moldova is a separate country. It's a landlocked country in Eastern Europe. The border is actually Ukraine on the east and then the EU to the west. Romania is the border. There is a region called Moldavia in Romania. So just not to get that confused because the Republic of Moldova is its own country. You gotta understand that in the past it was part of the USSR. It was like the vineyards of the Soviet Union, so to speak. Uh, they were producing actually most of the wine that was consumed. And once they became independent, the biggest market was Russia for a long time until the Russians had an embargo in 2006, 2009. From then on, Moldova had to start increasing quality so they could export to the Western markets. And that's where the Moldova, modern Moldova wine story begins. And in a way, that story is also kind of related or similar to Georgia. So what happened to Georgia, you know, with Russia and that pushed Georgian wine forward. Even though there's a long history of winemaking there, the modern wine industry is fairly new, fairly recent. Mm -hmm. There's three main regions. The country is small. We have Koju in the center and the north. In the southeast, we have Stefan Voda. And then in the southwest, I don't know if I'm going to be pronouncing mm -hmm. this right, it's Valu, Valu Dutran. I'll put it up on the screen. Maybe I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. My Romanian Moldovan is not very good. Uh, Koju, you're going to see more whites more aromatic mm -hmm. whites, some cool climate reds, and the two regions of the south, that's where more of the red wines are being made. Mm -hmm. And you can taste it in the wine that progressively as you move towards the south, the, the Cabernet Sauvignon, the Merlot actually get bigger. And also we taste the Fetesca Negra, uh, uh, a local red wine from the three regions as well, made in three different regions, and every single one of them express different fruit profile, uh, also different weight uh, and, and balance on the palate. So yeah, you're saying the IGT system you think is a good thing. Those three regions are very good. I, I think it makes sense. In Moldova, you're going to find a whole range of producers, everything from small boutique, garage, to, uh, to maybe some bigger enterprises with super modern winemaking equipment, a lot of investment, to humongous factories that used to focus on bulk wine but now want to do bottled wine. Among white wines, you're going to find a lot of local or regional aromatic white grapes in addition to Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Riesling. What were some of your impressions of the whites? Mm, for me, I really enjoy some of the aromatic whites because sometimes aromatic whites can be too overwhelming and heavy. But in Moldova, I found quite a couple of more gently aromatic balance with acidity sort of white. And uh, it's not just one of those like, you know, brindles, uh, light white, but when you understand the food, the condition, or rather the, um, the weather in, in Moldova, it actually really makes sense. I mean, I really like some of the aromatic white with the local, who's, uh, local dish called Mamaliga, which <laughs> is uh, cornbread, cheese, sour cream, and meat. So yeah, those aromatic white really goes well with certain local food. You're gonna find grapes uh, that you also find in Romania, like Fratesca Alba, Fratesca Regala, but there's also a unique Moldovan cross called Viarica, mm -hmm. which is uh, aromatic and has a city that's quite good, didn't you think? Mm -hmm. And now is really an interesting time to explore Moldova, just like many other less known wine countries as well, because they are putting into a lot of effort into understanding their local varieties, how to cultivate them properly, and they're constantly new local varieties varieties been commercialized and been made into wine as well. Another style of sparkling wine. Actually, Moldova has a long history of producing sparkling wine. Krico Vesselers, a state-owned company, produces millions and millions of bottles of sparkling wine that are enjoyed by the locals. They were exported to the Soviet Union, exported to Russia, currently all over the world. Really high quality 
value for money sparklers right mm -hmm. i mean we found a couple of examples that was aged for several years on the lease but what surprised me is i really like some of those aromatic a little bit sweet kind of uh, sparkling wine because it has a place it really has a place on a warm day or when you're you know out barbecuing with friends when i never thought i would like the style of wine but when i drank it i thought it was so balanced it was so much fun that you start imagining scenario and you realize that, hey, that wine actually makes sense. I want it. <laughs> For those pesky international red grapes, of course you're gonna have Pinot Noir, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and even Malbec. <laughs> <laughs> I remind you of Malbec. Yes, I know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, first of all, uh, you know, for some, there are some very good wines being made out of international red, uh, red wine grapes right now. Personally, I would, Pinot Noir, I would skip maybe a little bit, but the Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, blends even with Malbec are very interesting. What do you think? Yeah, especially the Cabernet and Merlot. Um, you would expect often when it comes to the lesser known wine regions, are becoming regions, they will make the cell wine into like the old monster. Of course, you get a couple of those examples, but I think predominantly the, the Bordeaux blend in, in Moldova, they are quite smart. What I like most about it is they have the, the, cheap, uh, the cheaper affordable offering at like mm. 5 euros, 6 euros, you can actually get really decent Bordeaux blend. Um, we even had one that's from 2009, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and then you, you can also go up to like 30 euros, 20 something euros for a very good Bordeaux, Bordeaux blend as well. Yeah. Yeah, I find I've actually find that to be very exciting. I know wine snobs will turn their eye, turn their nose up at international groups being made in these up and coming regions, mm -hmm. but I think Moldova can compete very strongly in the mid range mm -hmm. when it comes to Bordeaux blends because these wines are delicious, delicious, have a hint of complexity. They're food friendly yeah. and they're really enjoyable overall. Yeah, I think the the very strong edge that Moldova has as well is when they make Bordeaux blend with some of the regional varieties. We tasted a, a grape from Ukraine as well. Is that Bastado? I can't remember. Basta Bastado, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something close to the word Bastard. But anyway, that was there was also a very interesting blend made out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, those are grapes that like shows the regional or the history of Moldova, where it comes from and all that. But mixed with Cabernet and Merlot, the international outlook of They have their own local regional grapes. They're also found in Moldova called Fetesca Negra, Rara Negra as well. I love Rara Negra. <laughs> but then you also have Caucasian Georgian varieties, mm -hmm. Saparavi. These wines can be made into wines on their own. They can also be blended. And I found we found some very exciting wines. I love the ones uh, with Saparavi. So Saparavi with Cabernet or Merlot and... You know, Saparavi is a very memorable wine grape. It's inky, it has color, it has high acidity, it's got quite a fair bit of tannins, it's plummy and blah, 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 which sometimes can be really hard for new drinkers. Yeah. So dialing it back, pulling it back with some Merlot and Cabernet is always a good idea. It's always nice to have this familiarity of a certain grape that you already know and then with some local flavors as well, yeah. The last categories you're going to see, you're going to find is dessert wines, some ice wines, uh, and some of these wines are incredibly impressive, right? Mm, I would say um, actually the first wine from Moldova that really caught my attention and blew me away, just even didn't just really caught my attention but really blew me away, was Chateau Vatelli ice wine made out of Riesling. That was like for me in my head I was thinking this must be like a ninety six point ninety seven point one. I thought it was really brilliant, not. Not just for Moldova, but international standard wines. Yes, I agree. I agree. I think and there, we found some delicious Botrytis wine, late harvest ice wines, really some fantastic values in the country. We found ice wine made out of Cabernet Sauvignon. Rosé, which was really impressive, actually. Currently, the biggest market for Moldovan wine is actually neighboring Romania. Uh, Poland's a huge market, China, they're trying to push UK and they're really trying to push out, you know, it's a small country, there's only, I think, 3 million people living there, uh, it's not a high income country, so they have to find ways to export these wines to get these wines out, and I really think that they have a future on the export market, don't you think? I think so, they already have a very, uh, one notch, they're pretty much one notch above many up and coming wine regions at this point, point. and sometimes I suspect that it's because they have been focusing on the export market, which gives them a certain edge to make wines that are, you know, uh, tied to their local identity, but yet at the same time, 
kind of attuned to what the international standard they are looking for or what people want. I find actually, you know, what helps is there's a lot of bigger companies that used to sell bulk wine now looking to bottle and they're producing really pure, clean, varietally expressive mm-hmm. wines out of local grapes, Fatesca Alba, Fatesca Regala, Fatesca Negra. And if you see somebody, if you can get those wines exported on the shelf, you can pay, you know, under 10 US dollars for them, 10 euros. It's worth trying. I think people will really enjoy them, right? I mean, if I were an importer, I would actually try to import Moldovan wine swiftly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second thing for me, which I'm actually very excited about, I really like the Moldovan Bordeaux blends. I know this is, sounds a little bit boring, but Moldova is this unique country where, you know, it's all rolling hills, 200 meters above sea level is the, really the highest elevation, continental, quasi-Mediterranean climate. So you get wines that have lots of fruit, but not overly baked and still have great acidity. So guys, if you travel the country, be willing to go out and try different wines. There's wine barns all, wine barns, wine <laughs> bars all over Kishinau. <laughs> <laughs> really, the wine culture there is, is starting to grow. Domestic wine culture is starting to grow, starting to thrive. If you see some of these wines on the export market, don't be afraid to try. Especially, maybe not at the bar, the the bargain bin prices, but if you started to move into yeah. mid level and higher, the wines I think can be really impressive. You know, it's a country that I had that I really didn't know what to expect. I know some of the wines I tasted beforehand got me a little bit excited, but once we got there, it's a place that I really want to go back and visit. Don't you think? I want to go back for the wine, the placenta, the salma, the people, the food. Okay, sorry, I got drifted away <laughs> thinking about the food. <laughs> so don't be afraid to check out, guys. Remember to keep drinking adventurously. Try new things, experiment, and have fun with it. So if you like. <laughs> yes. I'm not very coordinated today. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Exotic Wine Travel, I will see you at the next episode.